Hello, wonderful nonprofit heroes. This is Tom Check with Greater Impact Consulting, where we help you spend more time on your mission and less time on your database. Today, we are talking about Salesforce page layouts. And as a perhaps new administrator or somebody who's not really familiar with Salesforce, page layouts are a really important part of the user experience. And what they do is they determine which fields show up in what order for the people who are using your Salesforce. And this can be really important because if we don't approach page layouts with a little bit of intentionality, we get users that are overwhelmed by how many fields there are to fill in, or they're filling in fields that we don't actually want them to fill in. Or worst case scenario, they don't have the fields in front of them that they need in front of them. And so instead of asking, they skip it, and you're left wondering why the data isn't getting where it's supposed to be. So let's dive in, let's open up Salesforce real quick and talk about what these page layouts are and what they look like. So here is our contact, John Doe. And the page layout is everything on this details pane. So all of these fields, name, birthday, gender, preferred currency, naming exclusions, all of this stuff all of these sections, um, all of these are based on a page layout that you as the administrator can edit. The other thing that is on your page layout is gonna be all of the lists that show up under related. Now, the page layout doesn't determine where your related lists show up, whether it's in these tabs or over on the right-hand side. Um, that's based on a lightning page layout, which is a separate thing, and I know that can be kind of confusing, so we'll do another video on lightning pages, um, but for today we're just focused on page layouts which determine our related lists and the fields in our details pane. So in order to start editing these, we gotta click on our setup icon. You can either say edit object or go to setup and go to the object manager and find the object that you're working on. Today we're gonna be using contact as our example object, but you can do this with any object that's in Salesforce. They're all gonna be using page layouts. Once you open up that, that object, on the left-hand side here, underneath fields and relationships, you'll see the page layout button. And here's where it shows us all the page layouts that are already here. Now, the, the layouts that show up in your org will probably be different than the ones in mine. They're based a lot of times on the apps that you've installed from AppExchange. So Nonprofit Success Pack, Program Management Module, Volunteers for Salesforce, or if you've got other apps like Inspire Planner for Project Management, that kind of stuff, you're gonna have different page layouts in here based on those apps and based on which object you're editing. So don't worry if you don't see exactly what you see on the screen here. You've got at least one contact layout in your, or I'm sorry, you've got at least one contact page layout that you can edit. To edit it, we just click on the page layout name and it's gonna open up the page layout editor. And there's really two important parts of this. There's what I call the palette, which are all the components up top here, the fields, which you can see, buttons, quick actions, related lists, um, report charts, components, visual force pages, all of this stuff happens up in the palette. And then there's the actual page layout, which is everything else on the page. So if you look here, you can see that we've got our contact details. And this looks just like it does for our John Doe contact. We've got name, account, affiliation, LinkedIn, gender, currency, naming exclusions. All of those show up here. And then down in a second section, we've got contact information. And this section is collapsible, which is nice, right? These sections, when we set them up in page layouts, they're collapsible. And that next section is contact information. So here's all of those fields that you see down here. So how do we change these things? At the very basic, most basic, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move a field from one place to the other. So let's say that perhaps I want naming exclusions, which in Nonprofit Success Pack determines whose name is on the formal and informal greetings. So really useful for your end of year thank you letters that you're sending out. Let's say I want that right under account name, just so that it's more visible. If I go ahead and click Quick Save, it'll keep me on this page, which is nice because we're gonna make a couple of changes here. And then if I reload my John Doe contact, I'll see that this naming exclusions 
field over here has moved up under the account name. So let's go ahead and refresh. All right, and now when I go back into my details pane, we see that over here naming exclusions has changed from where it used to be underneath preferred currency. Great, that's the most basic thing you're gonna do. The next thing you're gonna do is either add or remove a field from your page layout. And that's also pretty simple. Um, all of your fields that are available on this object are found in the palette. And we're gonna go to the fields icon here, the fields option in the list. And you can see every field that is on the contact object that you can add to a page layout. And there's a lot of them. Now, let's say for instance, the contact layout is something that we wanna use for our donor contacts, if that's how your organization is set up. But we don't want our volunteer contact stuff to show up there. So we don't want any of these volunteer fields to show up. But we might want you know, our total gifts, which are down here under donation totals, to show up. We can also, let's say we don't care about preferred currency. We can get rid of that from here by doing one of two things. We can either click on this little remove icon, or we can just simply click and drag it up into the palette, and then it disappears from the page layout. If I wanted to add it back, all I have to do is find it in my list, and I like using the, the quick find because it's a lot faster. Find my preferred currency, click and drag it around. So clicking and dragging, you see the green line tells you where it's going to show up, and I can move it anywhere I want. If you're looking for a field, you can see in here, a field that is already on the page layout looks grayed out, and a page that isn't on the page layout yet, or a field that's not on the page layout yet, is a little uh, darker text, and it's not grayed out. If you can't seem to find where one of these fields is and you want to move it, all you have to do is click on it, and it'll take you directly to it, and it'll highlight for a moment. So you see how it goes yellow when I click on it. I can do this for any field that's already on the page layout, and it'll show me where it is. So that's really useful as you're trying to navigate this, especially for the first couple times. If I want to add a field, I drag it down. If I want to remove a field, I either drag it up or I click that minus icon. The other thing that I might want to do is I might want to set up different sections, those collapsible pieces based on some custom fields that maybe I have. And that's pretty easy. All I have to do is in the first part of the section here, I click and drag a new section down here and I name it. I'm just going to call this Tom Test. And let's say that in my Tom Test section, I want all of these volunteer fields. Maybe that's where I want to hold on to these. So I can click and I can shift click and, and select multiple of these fields and then click and drag them down here. Now I've got all of these fields filled in, and if I hit save, what I'll see if I refresh John Doe is that now I've got a separate section underneath contact information that shows me the volunteer information, and that section is called Tom Test. All right, so now as I scroll down, So now I see that my Tom test section with all of its volunteer fields is down here below my contact information. That's the basics of adding a new section. There's a couple of other pieces in here though that can be really useful for you to know as an administrator. Let's say for instance on one page layout you want these fields to be read only, which is designated by this little lock icon. Some of them are by default read only, uh, some of them are not. And let's say that you've got a profile, like maybe an intern who's doing some data entry, but you don't want them to do all data entry. And you don't want them to be able to mess with certain fields. You maybe don't want them to be able to change the volunteer notes or the volunteer uh, fields, but you do want them to be able to update contact information. The easiest way to do that would be to go through and select the fields that you want to be read only on this page layout, go to properties, and select read only. You'll also notice that in there you can select required and that's an interesting one because that means that that field is required only on that page layout. So you don't have to make the field required when you're creating the field which means that it's required everywhere in order to save a record. You can make it so that it's only required on this page layout and especially as we think about the ways that different roles in our organization might interact with data, HR 
might interact with data and have some required fields that are different than perhaps fund development or program. And having a page layout that's set up for each of those profiles that allows them to set up different required fields for different profiles can be really handy for your organization to make sure that the right data is getting entered at the right time by the right people and then it's not available to other people at the wrong time by marking it as read only. So that's what we can do inside of that little wrench icon next to every field. You'll also notice that we can change the properties on a section and make it so that it's, it only shows up on the details page, not the edit page. We can also set up whether it's a one or two column and then the order that the tab key pushes us through that. So that's the basics of adding a new section of fields to a page layout and determining what's read only, what's required. And you can do that on any of these fields. The other part that we really want to make sure we're paying attention to is our related lists. So on John Doe, if I go to my related lists, I see that I've got relationships, organization affiliations, opportunities, recurring donations, campaign history. Maybe I don't want those related lists, or maybe I want additional related lists. If I click on this related list icon, it automatically drags me down to the right part of the page, right? So it drags the page down to the related lists area, and it shows you all of the different related lists that you want or that are connected to this contact object. So these will be different based on object, just like your fields will. But let's say I want to be able to see the cases that are assigned to this contact on this page layout. I can just click and drag it down here, and all of a sudden I see cases. So again, as you think about different roles within your organization and different types of object record types, different, you know, in this case, types of contacts, you might want different related lists to show up based on those two things. The last important thing that I always like to talk about, because it can be a little confusing, is the fields that show up in your related lists are determined by this little wrench icon here. When we go here, we can say which fields are actually visible, and we see these over here. So for organization affiliation, we've got affiliation name, account name, role, and status as our fields that are available on the page layout. If I were to go down to my affiliations, those are the ones I see here. I can also add additional fields uh, to that, so I can mark whether or not the account is active. I can mark whether or not the affiliation is current. Um, all of that stuff can be marked so that it shows up really easily when your users are just looking at the page. Because a lot of times when you create a new related list and add it to a page layout, you're just going to get the name, and that's not always super helpful to you. So that's the basics of how to create and modify a page layout. The last important thing we're going to cover today is identifying who gets to see which page layout when. And this is based on two things. First is the user's profile, like we talked about, kind of the, the position that they have in the company is determined by the profile that their user has. So I'm a system administrator profile right now in Salesforce, and you can set up custom profiles, which is a totally different video that we'll talk about that in. Um, the other thing is record types for the object you're on. So for contact, in my record types, I've got these three adult donor only, adult volunteer only, and youth. These will vary by organization. This should be set up and customized for your organization in the way that you create a difference in the world. If I go back to page layouts, I've got up here this page layout assignment button. And that's gonna be what determines which profiles and which record types get which page layouts. It's a lot of words to say. If we go in and we say edit assignment, I can do a couple of things. I can say that, for instance, my adult volunteer only record type for contacts, let's say I want them all to use the volunteer page layout. If I click on the column header, I can select volunteers contact layout, and it'll update all of those. Let's say that for a specific uh, profile, like perhaps my program management standard user, I only want them to see program management. So I can adjust it like that. I can also go in and adjust individual options. Let's say I want my customer community user to just see the contact layout, and I want on adult donor only record types, I want them to see the volunteers contact layout. 
I can adjust all of that. And you can see in, in uh, yellow here, all the ones that are going to change when I hit save. So that's how you determine which page layouts are used in which scenarios. It's by profile assigned to your user, and it's by record types available on the object. Once you've got that information, you can set up your page layouts, assign them to the right people and the right contact record types, and you'll be good to go. Your users will see the information they need and not the information they don't. So when you do this well, what happens is you get higher quality data in. It's easier for your users, which makes it easier for you, and they're way more likely to actually do it. That's big, especially in a small nonprofit where you don't want to be standing on the desk of the person who's entering data. You really want to make it as easy as possible for them to use your system. So that's all I've got for today. I hope this is useful, and please, please, please feel free to reach out if you've got any questions. And until next time, stay awesome and keep creating a greater impact in your community.